Hello, everybody. I have my special guest, Alyssa Harriman, with me today. We've already done the intro. Alyssa and I have known each other. I don't know. It's got to be 10, 12, 10 years. I'm losing track of time. But thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for showing up today. And I look forward to our chat. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I was trying to think that too. My, I think my daughter, who just turned 14 yesterday, was an infant when we met. Mm -hmm. So it's been a while. It's been a while. So as I mentioned, Alyssa is like my guru nutritionist. And so I wanted to have her on today because, oh my gosh, she is just such a wealth of knowledge and such a pleasure to always chat with. So let's just dive into something um, kind of personal, maybe not, but I know a lot of people, um, and, and just to set this up, Alyssa is not in the menopausal journey yet. But she works with a lot of people. She is pre, pre, pre postmenopausal um, or pre, pre, pre menopausal, but works with a lot of women that are in this stage of life. But I know one issue that you've had, um, because we've talked about it over the years, is um, acne or, uh, you know, I guess that's the easiest way to describe it. So can you just kind of, and it relates to your period. And yep. so let's just unravel this for a second and your hormones, because I would just love to hear your adventure, because I know for some women, skin is an issue for them. Oh, for sure. I was one of those teenagers that had cystic acne and just never kind of went away, had horrible periods as a young girl, even as a young adult. Um, really, the only medical solution I ever had was like acne medication, which I didn't want to use, uh, or because of the side effects or birth control, which, you know, being a kid in the 90s, that's what you did, right? Yeah. So, and, and even as an adult, like through pregnancies and, and postpartum, and in between all my pregnancies, I had four children. Um, I just always had this issue with this flare up of cystic acne that would come out of my skin. And I think it's important to recognize that there's a root cause to everything. And for me, um, my skin was a reflection of my gut health and my hormones had a huge influence on my gut health. So when my gut health was off, my diet was off. If I was more stressed, if I was in a hormonal season, um, it would tend to show up in my skin. I think it's also important to recognize that your skin is one of the largest organs of elimination. So if, you're, if your body is trying to get rid of things and the normal doors are not open, you're not urinating well, you're not, your bowels aren't eliminating well, you're not breathing well, you're not sweating well, then your body will look for ways to try to rid itself of toxins. So I've learned over the years what my triggers are and to really just focus on good gut health, really keeping sugar out of my diet and just eating as clean as possible around my hormonal cycles to help to prevent those breakouts from happening. Yes. And you know, this is, I love how you hit on root cause because so many times um, we're looking just to soften the symptoms and get, get rid of the signs and symptoms, right? So we're applying the creams and, you know, sometimes certain professions don't necessarily help because they don't either have the time or the training. And so they're like, here, take this cream, which mm -hmm. may or may not reduce the, the symptom, like the, the redness or the acne or whatever it is on your skin, but it's not addressing the root cause. And the root cause can take some investigation, right? Because I'm sure you just yeah. didn't go, oh, you know, you investigated, like you just said, how is my diet, my stress, the weather, like just the seasons, how is that affecting me? And how do I start to unravel this? And this is one of been the biggest changes. You're in your early 40s, but and, and you've been doing this for 18 years, like working in this industry, and very in tune with your body, etc. But it's also in my 30s, where I shifted out of the diet mentality to mm -hmm. the journey of my health, and getting to the root cause of my issues. So if you do have skin issues, you know, it is a lot of times the root cause of you said gut, maybe liver, a uh, hormones yeah. and those kind of things. So now are yeah. is there any, like, could you give us maybe two, two or three things that really worked for you? Uh, so we can give some, our listeners, some actionable steps here. Oh, for sure. So, you know, quickly going back to root cause, 
I, I always teach it in my practice. Like if I have a headache and I take an Advil, I'm treating the symptoms, not the cause of the headache. And I think that's important to recognize. And, and sometimes, you know, practitioners, their, their expertise is in the, the treatment of the symptom, not necessarily in understanding what caused the symptom or, or creating solutions for it. Uh, so what did I do to kind of fix it? So definitely, um, on learning my body, like understanding that when I have a lot of dairy or a lot of gluten, uh, for me, what causes the biggest flare up is refined sugar. So uh, if I have, you know, like over Christmas holidays, I'll break out or, you know, times of, of that of the season that we tend to find that those foods come in. Um, refined sugar is very inflammatory for my skin. Um, but you mentioned liver pathways, like looking at, am I eating foods that support my body's natural ability to properly metabolize hormones because our food has a tremendous impact on our hormones overall. So it was really just identifying what was working well for my body, recognizing that when I was having symptoms, what, you know, paying attention to what could have been the contributor to that symptoms. And then just through trial and error, figuring out what works really well for my body. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the key. We're all different. We're all different, yes. but I have to tell you, I'm doing a five-part series right now on sugar and cravings and sugar. Listen, it's a, it's a pleasurable food. Our brain loves it, but it does wreak havoc on our body. Absolutely. And a lot of people will say to me, Tanya, like, you knowing all this stuff, why don't you just never eat it again? And I'm like, you know what? The all or nothing doesn't work for me. And yes, I know deep down inside that if I got rid of all the sugar from my diet, I would be in a better state of health, right? But I'm like, then there's life and there's the human side of me. So to your point, what you're saying is, you know, there are times where it creeps into our diet a little bit more, but on a daily basis, how can we start to get more fruits and vegetables into our diet? How can we get better foods that support us rather than not? So exactly. Yeah, we're all humans. Listen, I know some people can give up things forever, but I just happen not to fall into that, that category. Well, I think one of my favorite ways to teach it is like it's it's important to understand that foods are beneficial or they're consequential. So, you know, there's some things like refined sugar, there's no benefit, it's consequential, right? And whereas eating your fruits and vegetables and your whole foods, those are beneficial, they're nutrient dense, our body gets a lot of goodness from them. So the goal ultimately is that most of what I do for my body is beneficial, right? The challenge is we live in a society where most of what we do to our body is consequential. And eventually you end up with symptoms or um, preventable diseases because most of your choices are consequential. So it's important to understand, okay, what is healthy? What nourishes my body? What helps me live in an optimal state? That's beneficial foods. And then what are the foods that my body has to recover from? Doesn't really add any benefit. And in small amounts is okay. But once I cross that threshold, there could be some consequence to that. And once you educate yourself around those two things, it makes food choices really easy. Mm. And you feel very free around your food choices because you're, you're more confident in making them. Yeah, and that we, I just did an episode called The Stages of Change, understanding where you are on the change process, because a lot of us aren't even aware that, oh my gosh, I eat this food, my skin flares up, or oh, I eat this food, now I'm bloated. Like there's, that is the pre-contemplation stage. We have zero awareness at all. So even just mm -hmm. understanding this awareness in ourselves is, it, is the part of the journey that we can learn from as we move along. So, you know, I met Alyssa, like I said, many, many years ago, and I was, she was speaking um, about eating fruits and vegetables. And I'm like, oh, I was in the back of the, the, you know, the back of the whatever. And I'm like, oh, I don't need to eat fruits and vegetables. I already eat a lot of them. I do green smoothies. But what I really noticed was that even though some of us eat um, uh, fruits and vegetables, we tend to eat a lot of the same things over and over. So if you look at your diet, you may be, you know, carrots, broccoli. I mean, honestly, the top three are ketchup, peas, corn, and carrots and potatoes. Like that really is the top three or four vegetables. It's crazy. But I'm like going, oh, I eat broccoli or beans. But as Alyssa was talking and, and we were talking about whole foods and the importance of whole foods in our diet for our gut health, our skin health, everything, right? We're just these cellular beings and we crave this micronutrition. And we think about this macronutrition, carbs, proteins, and fats, 
And we kind of understand this micronutrition, but it's so important. But I was kind of like not being defensive, but kind of my ego was taking over. And I was like, I, I'm fine. But then Alyssa was talking about getting more variety in our diet, right? And so one of the things uh, Alyssa and I both added to our diet is a, a supplement, which is, I don't even call it a supplement. I call it like whole food nutrition, but is juice plus because it has the micronutrition that our cells are craving. And I'll just ask uh, something to Alyssa in a minute. But one of the things I realized was when I started taking Juice Plus and I started to infuse my body with artichokes and bilberries and things that were not part of my regular diet, my cravings decreased, right? So how can you, because I know with women, right, one of the things with aging is that we um, don't process carbohydrates the same way, right? And, and on the same hand, we tend to crave more carbohydrates, and so it's this battle, but when we actually start to feed ourselves the proper nutrition, these micronutrients, we end up like, I was just in Savannah and I was like, I need Brussels sprouts. Like I have serious craving for Brussels sprouts. And I've heard this from many of my customers who take Juice Plus. They'll be like, I need asparagus right now. So can you explain like how micronutrition works in our cells? Oh, for sure. So micronutrition is like our vitamins, our minerals, antioxidants, phytonutrients. So the things that we primarily should obtain from food. Um, I know there became inside the nutrition field, this huge kind of thought that we could just out supplement a bad diet and we can't, we cannot out supplement a bad diet. And part of the reason is because the most bioavailable nutrients for your body actually come from whole foods. Your body doesn't get glow in the dark pee when it eats a salad like it does when it takes a multivitamin. So first and foremost, our nutritional requirements as human beings is that we need a very large spectrum of nutrients um, to get into our bloodstream every single day. So if our diet is lacking in whole foods, then we can be lacking in a lot of key nutrients. Um, if we are really busy, highly stressed, we can burn through our nutrients faster. Um, or if we are just eating poorly and then we're taking a bunch of lab made products. So lab made products are like your multivitamins, your isolated vitamins and minerals. They are made of chemicals and they're made to mimic or look close to naturally occurring nutrients found in food because the only way to get naturally occurring nutrients into your body is actually from food. So micronutrients are absolutely essential to health because every part process in your body requires nutrients to be present, like from your brain being able to fire and receive messages, your digestive tract being able to work, your hormones being able to be balanced, um, reducing risk factor for preventable disease. We need a lot of nutrients. And different foods have different nutrients, which is why variety is so important. That was why I aligned with the Juice Plus company was because one, the products are made entirely of whole food. You're looking at concentrated whole food and you're looking at a variety that is significantly larger than the foods we commonly consume on a daily basis. So that was why it made sense to me. I loved that there was some good clinical evidence to back up the product. So in the health supplement industry, we don't see a lot of good evidence on products. Um, this company particularly had incredible incredible scientific evidence, which as a health practitioner assured me that there was positive outcomes in human health for people who use these concentrated whole food products. So again, we can't out supplement a bad diet. We want you to eat more of the right foods. We want to help you increase variety, but the reality is most of us have gaps and that's where supplementation comes in. And that's where products like juice plus are so exceptional is because you're getting a pretty large um, variety of nutrients from a whole bunch of different foods to fill those gaps in your diet, which is also going to, you know, make up for any of the missing nutrients that maybe you didn't consume in the foods that you, you were eating. So when it comes to cravings, Oftentimes when our body is lacking for something or looking for something, it will uh, signal us to have cravings to go and uh, as a way to go and try to source those things. Unfortunately, most of us don't understand our cravings. 
cravings can be related to the quality of your gut bacteria. So if you've eaten a lot of the wrong foods over a long period of time, you've probably grown a certain culture of bacteria that crave those foods and they release signals from your gut to your brain to tell you to consume more of those foods. So you, if you've ever tried to like stop eating sugar or get away from refined carbs or even just fast foods and all of a sudden you just like, you feel miserable, your cravings intensify, it's because they're literally starving and they're increasing their signals to your brain. So you have to kind of muscle through that. But one of the easiest ways to get over cravings um, is to nutritionally support your body. And when you start to give your body really bioavailable nutrients, the body is in a, a position to be able to heal and repair. And those signals that are telling you to go and eat in search of specific nutrients get shut off because those nutrients have been obtained. And then what ends up happening is the foods you're eating change and your gut bacteria culture changes. And then you start to crave more of the right foods and you find it easier to eat the right foods and you find it easier to stay on track. So I like the products for people at any level of healthy eating, because if you're struggling with healthy eating, it's a great first step, a great way to start to get those nutrients into your bloodstream. But maybe you are already on a clean eating journey. you probably still have some gaps. It's a great way to kind of like take your nutrition to another level. And I work with people who are professional athletes and their nutrition is exceptional. Like it's beyond what I do. And they still use those products because they want that assurance that no matter what their body is getting that bioavailable nutrition. Yeah. And you know what, this is when I had to put my ego aside because we, we do, we get defensive and it's like food is very emotional. Right. And it's like, you know, don't tell me how to eat differently. I'm fine. And, and so it, it, if, anyway, I listened to Alyssa's presentation. You can hear how, you know, I just love listening to her speak. And I still was like, I'm not giving in to this. And I literally got my car after, you know, the event. And I wasn't like till the end of the driveway. And I called Alyssa and I said, okay, <laughs> I need some of these because I am definitely, even though I was in that healthy category, um, I was still missing a lot of micronutrition in my diet. And I, you know, then we're starting to understand how my gut was sending messages to my brain or vice versa back and forth on this, this, whatever that axis is called. Is, I think it's, is that the HPA axis or I don't even know. I call it the gut brain axis. Gut brain, <laughs> thank you, gut brain axis. And I, you know, was really had a lot of cravings for sugar. So this definitely helped. And like I said, I started craving broccoli and uh, uh, artichokes. I mean, I have artichokes in my house, olives, like things I was not eating on a regular basis. And I will just say one last note before we move on that kids are free for four years over the age of four to um, roughly 18, 21, if they're in school, I believe it still is. And so my kids had free juice plus uh, with an adult order for four years each. And it was definitely like my kids you know, like a lot of kids, we have gaps in our diet, we are not perfect. So this was definitely an assurance of, of what was, um, you know, definitely the bridges the gap of what we needed. So thank you for all of that. So you have a, you know, a nutrition practice as well. And you really focus in on cancer, you're teaching. Um, and you have women come into your um, office, what are some things like what are some things that are going on with women these days? Like what's some top complaints? And, um, you know, because I know you deal a lot with people in the menopausal stage. Absolutely. I, f I find that most people who work with a nutritionist is because they're like, oh, nothing's working. I need to get professional support in this situation. So the, uh, my practice is kind of split in two. Half of it is helping people navigate a cancer diagnosis and, and you know, getting them through treatment. Some of them want to do the natural route. Um, so helping them there. But the other part of my practice is a large majority of that other part of my practice is women who are just struggling in their bodies, whether it's weight gain, or they're not able to take weight off their bodies, like really, really stubborn in terms of weight loss, um, moodiness, uh, I get a lot of uh, perimenopause and menopausal women who are dealing with hot flashes and sleeping issues. Um, I also get proactive individuals in my practice that are like, you know, they know they're, they got a family risk of cardiovascular disease or osteoporosis, or um, once you've hit menopause, your risk for breast cancer goes up and, you know, all of the aunts or sisters, or, you know, there was a family history of this. So those are common. A couple other reasons is fatigue. 
Um, I get a lot of very exhausted people in my practice, mostly women in that situation. So falling into that adrenal insufficiency or adrenal fatigue symptoms um, are, are, are probably, that would be the most common outside of a, a disease diagnosis for the people that come into my practice. Yeah, you know, I can remember being absolutely exhausted for many years. <laughs> Just, and, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and maybe you can explain this to me because I know, like, um, uh, you know, I had young kids, I was super busy, I was not eat like I was eating a lot more sugar for for energy, caffeine, quick fixes, my, you know, I again, having kids right or wrong, we had, you know, a lot of spaghetti, macaroni and cheese, desserts, we had the breakfast, the muffins, right. And so you can now looking back, I can be like, Oh, my God, I can totally see how I was a disaster, how I fried myself out. And I became anxious, like I I really had, but I didn't understand the cortisol, I didn't understand how it was making me my insulin work, I didn't understand why I was trying to like eat less, but work out more and not losing any weight and being completely wiped out. Um, So I was definitely in that category of, you know, even being in the health and fitness field since I was early twenties of not understanding what was happening to my female body at all. And so when these women come into you, what are some of the, you know, one of the things I talk a lot about here is simple shifts. What are some of the simple shifts? I think we can already, I can guess some of them already, but I love, I love hearing you talk. What are some of the simple shifts you begin to um, do? And I know you have to meet everybody where they are, but just, you know, some of the things you recommend. For sure. So I, you know, going back to the adrenal fatigue piece, it, it we live in a society where we're just busy. Like when you talk to everyone, we're busy, right? We're busy with our kids. We're busy in our careers. We're busy in our social life. We're busy in our family responsibilities. And we live in this perpetual state of fight or flight. So mm-hmm. back in the caveman days, this hormonal process was super important because if I was being chased by a bear, I needed to decide quickly, was I going to fight that bear or was I going to run away from that bear? And what's happened is we live in a society where the bear is our lifestyle. It is all of the things that we pile onto ourselves and we're constantly in fight or flight mode. And when we're in fight or flight mode, our nutrient requirements go up. And this is often the time when the quality of our nutrition goes down. When we get stressed, very few of us are like, oh, I need to eat cleaner. I should probably start juicing and make a smoothie. Like we, like we know those things will make ourselves feel better, but because our bandwidth is shortened and our ability to do stuff, we look for convenience. We, our body literally looks for food that's easy to break down. So refined and processed food doesn't take a lot of work, but it doesn't add a lot of value either, going back to those beneficial or consequential foods. So we, we live in this perpetual state of fight or flight. It's become part of our lifestyle. The quality of our nutrition often goes down in those moments when it really needs to go up. So now our body's becoming depleted. And because we're becoming depleted, we're less capable of functioning optimally. And then all of a sudden we get symptoms, anxiety, restlessness, sleeplessness, hormonal instability, mood instability. And really it's our lifestyle that created this perfect storm. So when it comes to, and again, everybody's bodies are different. There is no one size fits all approach, but there are general guidelines that are beneficial pretty much to all human beings. And the number one is you have to get your nutrition right. Mm -hmm. Um, Your body cannot function optimally with poor nutrition. It's not possible. I spent 18 years studying it. I came from the healthcare industry. I was a kid that took advanced science all the way through high school. Um, I like, this is just fact. Your body cannot function optimally without good nutrition. So getting a good nutrition plan in place, it shouldn't be restrictive. It shouldn't make you count calories or macros or anything like that. That's unhealthy behavior around food. What it should look like is that, you know, you're eating a lot of beneficial foods, 80% of your calories from whole foods, take a good supplement. Um, We recommend the juice plus products because it's whole food, but do your research, uh, ask Tanya for a class, 
<laughs> and be like, I want to learn more about this. We've got, we've got great things, but you know, good nutrition has to be in place in order for the body to be able to heal, repair and detoxify. The second thing is get your blood sugar stabilized. So if you're eating infrequently, if you're skipping your meals and snacks, you're not providing your body with any sort of stable source of energy, your metabolism is going to not be functioning optimally. Um, we all know those people who are super lean or slender and they're like, oh, you know, I, I eat all the time. I never have a problem with my weight. And it's part of the reason is because they have a high metabolism because they do, they fuel their body often, they fuel their body well. And as a result, their body efficiently burns energy, uh, burns calories and efficiently makes energy. So if you're trying to abstain from food or you're missing your meals and snacks, then you're really disrupting your metabolism, which also has a huge impact on your energy levels. The next one is stress management. Mm -hmm. um, and this is, these are, these are important guidelines. Like these are things that on their own will have benefit, but if you can get them working together, you're going to have tremendous results. So good nutrition, stabilize your blood sugar, and then stress management. So what does that look like for you? Is it going to be meditation? I got apps on my phone that when I can feel my stress hormones bubbling up, I like I take a five minute break and put the app in because I've recognized those symptoms in my body. Um, are you saying yes to things you should be saying no to? Do you need to do kind of a lifestyle inventory and figure out what is it that's on your plate that shouldn't be there that you need to just let go of or delegate? Um, looking at what brings you joy and happiness and how are you incorporating that? Things like meditation, yoga, deep breathing, um, are, are important and stress management is crucial to your quality of life. And it needs to hold a place in your day, just like preparing healthy foods needs to hold a place. Um, you know, eating meals and snacks on schedule needs to hold a place. Your stress management does as well. And then the fourth guideline is exercise. And when you're exhausted, excessive exercise will actually make it worse. So when, when clients are in adrenal fatigue, we're like, you need to exercise. You need to move the lymphatic system. You need to get your muscles moving. It's good for mental health, but you don't need to go and do 90 minutes, um, 25 minutes of yoga, 30 minutes of stretching, uh, a low impact class, going for a walk in nature. But you have to move your body every single day because that's also going to help with metabolism. It's going to help you with lean muscle and it's going to make you feel better in your body. And once you start to feel better in your body because you're moving your body, then you feel more empowered to make more healthy choices. You're going to eat cleaner foods because you're getting a great result from your fitness. You're going to eat more consistently for good energy levels. And then you're going to find that time for stress management. So those four core guidelines really are essential to, to, to good health for anyone. Yeah. You know what is so interesting? I, I talk about this. I was living in fight and flight for years and never knew it because I was a type A personality. I got the busy badge, you know, gold stars. You get your ego gets petted for being so busy. Oh my God. I don't know how you can do it all. You're a great wife, mother, you're running a business. Oh my gosh. And so you get this pumped up, right? And you're just like, so I, Again, I didn't know this stuff because I didn't understand all of this. And then I'm eating sugar, right? And then my body's being depleted in nutrients. I'm not eating properly. I was absolutely exhausted. And, and because we lived in this culture and I went to school and took programs that said in order to lose weight is calories in uh, versus calories out, which is debunked. It's not true because a calorie is not a calorie. But I, I had all this teaching. And so I had to learn how to re-educate myself. And I was explaining to people, I didn't have the internet like we have now. This did, this did not exist. So this may sound easier now, but when you're trying to find a book about this stuff that's not even written about, like the microbiome was is, is relatively new. Um, nervous system, parasympathetic, sympathetic. And so I realized I was running on this sympathetic fight flight. And even though I had been a Pilates instructor since 1996 or seven, I was still like, I don't like, I didn't understand it because I'm like, if I'm not pumping weights and like grinding it out on this stairmaster, and again, further contributing to this complete wreck I'm, I'm making, but we're told eat less, exercise more. 
So one of the things that I did, which I'm going to, I haven't really talked a lot about on the podcast yet, but a lot of people have bought my, my rolling programs is I started rolling and it was life changing for me. And even though I still do Pilates, you know, I infuse yoga and all that stuff into my classes. I now, and have for the last probably 10 years, have a dedicated understanding of the importance of that grounding um, to put myself in that rest, digest, heal, which is what you're talking about, right? So yep. get, getting off that treadmill. And what I see a lot of women doing, um, you know, at, at older ages too, are like, I got to do this boot camp right? Like they haven't exercised in a long time. They're like, I got to, I got to get the weight off. So I'm going to go and do the hardest exercises. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Let's see where you are now. Let's maybe go for a walk, do some rolling, some light weights. And like, and everybody's like, no, because I want it fast to get that emergency. Right. And then they end up hurting themselves. Then they're in pain. And if they had done the approach that I teach, they would have had long-term results. But that again is our human behavior, right? Fast, immediate, got to work hard. And I think our message partly today too is slow down. <laughs> slow down, learn how to calm down this nervous system. And I always say weight loss is not an emergency, right? Nothing is an emergency here. We need to put together a plan. And Alyssa's given us like four great steps of how to to um you know add, start adding this into our life so that is great um okay one other thing i'd like to talk about well there's lots more but is um this let's talk about omegas for a moment here because i just want to see if we can tie this all in and i'd love to get your opinion but um i'm really spending a lot of time and i on helping people balance their blood sugar levels which is one of the tips that you mentioned and when we have erratic glucose spikes, okay, uh, it can lead to, you know, pre-diabetes leads to diabetes. And then Alzheimer's is being called diabetes three, right? So, um, and uh, just one, one, one little thing of taking omegas, okay, are um, essential fatty acids that are not produced in our body. So we need to get them outside of ourselves. Um, what can you just educate us a little bit about omegas because that helps with our brain health our joint health our eye health our heart health and why that is a supplement we might be wanting to look at well it's it's anything that you hear like essential um so essential fatty acids is what we call our omegas essential means that it has to be obtained by the diet because our body doesn't manufacture it and going back to the previous, you know, discussion around cravings, your body will crave things it's deficient in. You just might not recognize what the cravings actually are for. So um, essential fatty acids, omegas are absolutely vital to health and longevity, especially from perimenopause on. I, I believe they're essential, you know, from birth and on, but we find that um, oftentimes women do feel significantly better when they add a quality omega in and during that phase of life, during those hormonal phases. So essential fatty acids are essential. And for many, many years, we use fish oil. And uh, I stopped using fish oil in my practice probably close to 15 years ago now, definitely 14 years, but probably even 15 years now. And I didn't like the idea of fish oil, uh, but it was like the only proven way to get these, these essential fatty acids. But you're looking at animals that didn't swim in clean water, that the water's less clean now. A lot of fish oil products come from farm fish and they, they feed those fish things like chicken feces. So we really don't want these, these fish oils. They're also highly processed. And because fish oil doesn't naturally contain any sort of antioxidants to preserve the oil, by the time they filter clean, uh, encapsul or put encapsulated or put it in a gel cap, um, it's extremely processed and it's, it's very, it's really just rancid oil. And that's why when you burp and taste rancid fish oil afterwards, it's because you're literally putting rancid oil in your body. I had found that my can clients that were going through cancer, when we use fish oil with them, they didn't do as well as my clients who use plant-based oil. So I had completely eliminated fish oil as a result um, early in my practice um, because I just noticed that my clients who use fish oil didn't do very well. And my clients who use plant-based oils because plants have 
added nutrients and antioxidants, they seem to do much better. So that's kind of been my protocol the entire time. Um, I like that the Juice Plus company has a plant-based omega, and they actually use LJ oil, which is where fish get their omega-3 from. So fish don't actually have omega-3. They eat LJ, which is rich in omega-3, and that builds up in their tissues. So we don't even need to consume fish oil to get our omegas. We can go right to the source of the omegas for the fish themselves, which is much more environmentally friendly. Um, I think it takes something like three kilograms of fish to make like an ounce of fish oil. I, I know that's not exact, but it's in and around that range. So Fish oil um, as a supplement is also really detrimental to our environment. And we, we don't want to be contributing to a farming practice that is not ideal for our world as well. So I recommend plant oils. Go for an algae-based formula. Like I said, the Juice Plus company does have one. I particularly like their formula because they paired it up with high antioxidant oils. So you're getting a lot of nutrient-dense oils and all of those essential fatty acids. So it's a full spectrum of omegas inside that product. Um, but everybody should take it because these essential fatty acids make up every single cell in your body. So every cell requires it. And in individuals that are aging quickly, or they have, feel that they have really dry skin or really dry eyes, or even vaginal dryness as you get into menopause, those are all symptoms of essential fatty acid deficiency, as is um, cognitive function. If you are finding that you are um, just poor memory, brain fog, really having a hard time, um, you know, thinking things through, things are feeling really difficult for your brain. That's also an indication that you could possibly benefit from increasing your essential fatty acids. So definitely recommend and recommend uh, that you look for a plant-based formula for sure. So often I'll get people that say to me, um, I take, I have chia seeds and flax in my diet and those have some omegas mm -hmm. in them, right? Mm -hmm. Um, what I do know, so comment on a couple of foods in a second, but long, long time ago, we used to have a balance of omega-3 to omega-6 in our body and omega-3s are anti-inflammatory and omega-6s are inflammatory. Our diets today are basically, uh, omega-3s one to omega-6s 20 roughly. I think that was the latest stat that I read which means in our diets, in our current diets right now, we are taking in some omegas, but we are taking in way too many um, inf inflammatory omegas, which come in processed foods from like, correct me if I'm wrong, like sunflower oils, um, like where are we getting those um, canola oils? So are, yeah, clear that up for me. So there's, there's good, like there's, there's good and bad omega-6, like the natural that you would get from foods that you would consume. Like if you ate sunflowers, that's a good omega-6. So omega-6 is essential. Um, we tend to have more omega-6 in our diet through processed foods. So through processing, they're using a lot of oils that are omega-6 rich. And because essential fatty acids kind of compete for absorption, if you have too much of one, you can actually cause deficiencies in another, which is why most health practitioners over the past like 30 years have recommended just omega-3. They're, they're, we're getting a lot of omega-6. We're getting these other omegas from these, these processed foods that are heavily in our diet. So we need to make up for this lack of omega-3. We actually need them all. They're all essential. Um, but it's the, the, the amount of processed foods in our diet means that we're getting a high level of processed omega-6, which is very inflammatory. Uh, however, you don't have to avoid the foods that omega-6 comes from because in their natural source, those are good, healthy essential fatty acids. So yes, good point. Okay, very good. Yes, so it, this goes back to eating a varied diet, right? From all different sources. And also, if you need to bridge the gap, look for a good omega um, going forward, because uh, it's good for good for our brain. Okay, so is there anything else that you feel you would like to share? I know we've touched upon a lot of things. We could keep talking. We're both on time restraints here. So we're going to wrap it up. But is there anything else that um, like, just that you'd like to feel with this sure. conversation. I know we haven't talked a lot about post postmenopausal, but
but these all these things that we're talking about do apply to the, to every age group. Absolutely. So I think it's important to recognize that the, I know we live in this society and and all of these promises of fast fixes and quick results. Those are often very, um, they're not well sustained. And when you're looking at your nutrition and your, your personal health program, like the supplements you're investing in and your fitness and your stress management and the foods you're consuming, all of these things are about building a healthier version of you. And when we end up on trend diets or fad diets or restrictive diets, or we're looking for quick fixes, it's like all of a sudden it's almost summer and I got to get into my summer clothes. I need to do something that's, you know, fast. Those things don't really focus on you living in a healthier body. And I've always kind of been outspoken much like Tanya about fad based diets, because none of those actually focus on you getting more nutrients, essential fatty acids, more nutrition in your body. Those things don't focus on you managing your stress and exercising in a way that works for your body. And oftentimes they cause blood sugar irregularities. So, you know, as final advice, I just want to encourage you to look at your, your health and, and even the results that you want as a journey and look at it as you are doing the things that are helping you to live in a healthier body long term. And the side effect of doing the things that help you live in a healthier body long term is great results and sustainable results. But in addition to that, you're going to have reduced risk for preventable disease. You're going to have a better quality of life. And you're not going to end up going through this cycle again, where all of a sudden you feel like you have to deprive yourself or you're unhappy with your health because you've taken control and you've just made that commitment to your own personal healthy living journey. So it's not about a quick fix. You can get great results, but it's really about what are you doing that helps you live in a healthier body? Yeah. And that, that just dives. Oh my gosh. I could, we could talk for another hour just on that conversation alone that just dives into mindset, which is what I talk a lot about my vibrant living membership. We know a lot of the things we should be doing. Okay. How do we begin to do them? How do we get out of diet culture? How do we just get 1% better tomorrow? And the next day, it doesn't have to be a hundred percent better. So excellent parting words. And where can people find you, Alyssa, if they're having some nutritional challenges or um, just, you know, want to speak with you further? Where is the best place for them to find you? The best, easiest place is Instagram. If you have it, I'm nutrition.mom. So I'm super easy to find. And uh, you can also uh, head over to my website at alyssaharryman.com. And uh, if you have any questions, there's a little form that you can fill in. And uh, I'm happy to answer any of your questions. Perfect. Well, thank you very much for spending time today. Thank you listeners for listening. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. We'll see you in the next episode.